Joining us now, the person who asked the question that elicited the response from Director Burns, Democratic member of the Intelligence Committee, Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado. He also traveled to the Middle East recently, where he met Israeli and Palestinian leaders. So we'll get to that because two burning crises in the world. Let's stay on Ukraine for a moment. Can you explain how dire the situation is? How long can Ukraine continue while the U.S. Uh, sits waiting to vote and waiting to get aid to Ukraine? Mika, thanks for having me. Ukraine started battling Putin with their bare hands, and now they're having to do it again because they're out mm. of bullets, because we have not come forward with this aid, even though they have done absolutely everything the world could have asked them to do. Nobody could have imagined uh, the success that they have had on the battlefield because of their bravery and because of their courage and because they are fighting, as President Zelensky says, not just for Ukraine, but for democracy. They understand that. Right. We need to understand that. That's the reason I asked Secretary Burns the question yesterday. Listen to this, S Director Burns. This is a guy who's worked in Bush administrations and in the Obama administration. And I asked him, what about the guys in the Republican Party now who are saying we can't afford this fight in Russia? We've got to worry about some theoretical, plausible, but theoretical future battle with China. He basically said their position is ridiculous. You know, for $60 billion, we can keep Ukraine in this fight. We can get to a result where the end is a noble result for the people of Ukraine, for the West, as Joe said, for democracy, and send a signal to Xi Jinping that when tyrants invade another country, the free countries of this world are going to band together with the leadership of the United States. That's what Ronald Reagan meant when he said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And it's what the current House Republicans have forgotten. Senator Bennett, you and other members of your committee uh, just recently returned from a trip uh, to the Middle East. And I'm wondering, when you were in Israel, uh, the war against Hamas that Israel is conducting, the legitimate war, no doubt about that, but it began <clears throat> within the first few days with the Israelis dropping 2,000-pound bombs on various elements in a region of the most highly congested urban regions in the world, two and a half million people living in Gaza. And each and every day we've seen and heard anecdotal evidence of massive numbers of Palestinians being killed. Could you talk about the after effect of what we're doing, what we're participating in, in terms of supplying these, this ordinance to the Israeli army and, and, and what is going on there? the after effect on our reputation in the world? Well, I think the after effect is going to be very significant for, for Israel and for the United States. It's important to recognize that Hamas is a death cult and, and attacked Israel. It's important for us to remember, as we sit here today, there are still about 100 hostages that Hamas has uh, refused to turn over. Six of those, by the way, are Americans. It's very important for us to be clear-eyed about that because we've got to get those hostages back. But there has been a lot of uh, uh, damage as a result of this war, and there's starvation in Gaza that's going to be a shame on the conscience of the world. And I believe that the United States and, and Israel and, and the Arab partners in the region have a moral obligation to come together and say, we're going to do what we can to mitigate this human suffering, because we know that starvation in Gaza will breed terrorism. We know that. It's naive to think anything else. And uh, I think it's critically important for us to work with the Israelis and with others to make sure that we, we provide that humanitarian aid, irrespective of what Hamas does. We can't rely on Hamas to care about what's happening to the civilians uh, in, in the Palestinian territories in Gaza. Uh, we can do a better job than that together.
Senator Bennett, we want to get your reaction uh, to some new reporting I have this morning. Uh, President Biden considering that if Israel were to launch a full invasion of Rafah, despite warnings from Washington not to do so because of the humanitarian concerns, that he would consider for the first time conditioning military aid to Israel. Does that seem like an appropriate measure to you? I think he's sending an important message. It's not clear to me at all that Prime Minister Netanyahu has a plan for Rafah. It's not clear to me that he has a plan, as, as his people said when Senator Booker and I were there last weekend, to move the civilians out of Rafah before he sends his troops in. I can understand the need to dismantle the remaining six uh, Hamas battalions that are there, but we need to understand how he's going to do that. And, uh, and I think that the, the prevailing view in our country and in many places around the world is that too many civilians have died in this war already. So I think that's what President Biden is saying as, as a friend of Israel, by the way. I mean, President Biden has stood up uh, in this region, and I think Prime Minister Netanyahu has shown over and over again that he's incapable of listening to advice from his friends, that he is pursuing policies every single day. They're about his election and his remaining in power in Israel. And again, you know, when we're having a debate today about what's naive, I think it's worth considering whether the policies that Prime Minister Netanyahu pursued over the last 15 years in the end kept Israel safe or whether or not we have to pursue a new set of policies, abandon what didn't work over the last 75 years and work toward a two-state solution, which I think is the only way that we're going to get to a place of enduring peace in the Middle East. We may never get there, but it's incumbent on us to not live up, give up on hope. And it's incumbent on us to summon the international uh, allies that we have to make sure that children in Palestine don't starve because Hamas doesn't care about them or because of right. the way this war is being prosecuted. Democratic member of the Intelligence Committee, Senator Michael Bennett, thank you so much for coming on this morning. We appreciate it.